Hi, good morning. Can you introduce yourself and tell us your role in the district? Hi, my name is Delia Castro and I am the staff secretary for the transfer office. Wonderful. Today we'll talk to you about intra-district transfers. Um, can you tell us what an intra-district transfer is? Uh, intra-district transfers are transfers within our district. Wonderful. So if I'm at a current school, the district I want to go to another school within the district, I chose and go and talk to you? That is correct. So that is considered an intra-district transfer. Beautiful. And what is the process to apply for this transfer? Uh, so the process is basically you just, um, you can come into the office uh, or you can obtain the application from the district website at this point. Um, and all you do is fill out the form and provide us with a current uh, proof of address, such as pg &E garbage or water bill within 45 days under the parents' names, of course. Wonderful. If I am coming new to the district, and I want to go to a school that's not my neighborhood school. Do I go right to your office first? So I suggest uh, that you enroll at your school of residency only because transfers are not guaranteed. Um, they are based on space availability. Um, therefore, I do suggest that uh, you enroll at the school of residency first and then apply for the transfer. Wonderful. When I'm completing the process, what information do I have to give? When I'm so like I said, all I need um, so all I need is the form, uh, the current utility bill, and of course you also have to choose, um, or you also have to let us know why you are requesting the transfer. And what are some of the reasons that are reasons why I can ask for a transfer? So the first reason is sibling. Um, if you have a sibling at the school requested, then that's our first priority because evidently we want to keep siblings together. Um, the second one is, so let's say that your parent works for the school site. Um, that's, that's the second priority. Uh, the third one is uh, CSI. If your school of residency is a Title I school, uh, which is the low performing school, and you're interested in, in, a, uh, non, um, in, a, in a different school, then that is considered CSI. That would be the third option. Um, the fourth one is program. So let's say that your school of residency does not offer Mandarin and that's something that you're interested in, um, then that would be the fourth um, option. The fifth one would be safety. Um, if there's a sa safety, um, if you're going through bullying at the school that you're in and, and you just want to start over at a different school, um, that's considered safety and that would be the fifth reason. The sixth one is special circumstances. Um, and this is also kind of considered safety, um, but for this one, uh, special circumstances could be uh, you know, um, I just want a different school because, um, uh, let's say, uh, I want a different school because uh, I work close to that school and I just can't get my child on time, things like that. That would kind of be special circumstances. Um, uh, and that's basically it. So those are all the options. <laughs> Super helpful. Um, what is the timeline for the transfer process? When, when am I eligible? The timeline. So, um, when are you eligible? So, um, the, for uh, priority enrollment, is, uh, it, it, should, uh, it should start um, between February 1st through February 26th. That's, um, that's our, our open enrollment date. That's the date for the open enrollment. However, um, you can apply for a late transfer, um, and that can be throughout the whole school year. Oh. And then if I apply in the February window, when do I hear back? So you should hear back, um, I want to say sometime in April or May, only because um, schools have to give priority to their residents, and if they have extra um, space, then they'll let us know, and then that's when we can begin um, approving students. Amazing. So you should receive a letter, I want to say, sometime in, in April or the beginning of May, maybe late April, beginning of May. Wonderful. Um, and when I, say I do get one, my first grader, I want to do a transfer and they are accepted. Um, do I have to reapply every mm -hmm. year? Is it permanent? How does that work for the years outside of my initial year? So uh, you do not have to reapply for a transfer. Uh, once you get approved, um, the student can stay there um, throughout the school, um, the student can remain at that school um, until he or she, um, I wanna say like graduates. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it, does that make sense? Yep. Um, so if it goes till sixth grade, my yeah. first and then so let's say so if, if this is for if this is for first grade, yeah. So if this is for first grade, then the student can stay there until the sixth grade. Um, and then once he or she goes into the seventh, then if parents are still interested for the transfer, because most parents do want them to continue into the feeder school. Um, so then they assume that they don't have to do anything um, and that they're just going to automatically roll over. Well, guess what? They have to apply for a transfer then. Okay. Yeah. So if my, if the elementary school that I choose feeds to a different middle school than my home school, I need to apply mm -hmm. again when they're in that sixth grade year for seventh grade to follow them to that. That is correct. And then again for high school one more time. That is correct. Gotcha. Very helpful. That is correct. Yes. <laughs> Um, and do you have a sense of how many transfers are accepted each year? Like, what is the likelihood of someone's transfer being approved? Um, so like I said, it, it, it all depends on, it's based on space availability. Um, but we do approve, uh, I want to say that, um, most transfers do get approved unless it's a school that has a lot of residents such as El Cerrito High, uh, Kensington. Um, those schools are, are usually pretty impacted. And, you know, sometimes we don't get many, many spaces for transfer students, but sometimes we do. So it's just, I, I can't, I really can't tell you because it changes year by year. No, it's very helpful. We really appreciate it. Is there anything else you can think of that parents should know as they consider the intra-district transfer process? Um, like I said, they just have to be aware that, um, so the, like I said, the student, what I meant to say was that the, the uh, approval is, is goes up to the highest grade level at that school. Mm -hmm. And they just have to keep in mind that they have to do it for the feeder school because they don't do it and then they wait till the last minute. And then by the time that they come in and apply, there's no room. So then the student has to go to the school of residency and they get very upset because evidently, you know, they don't know anyone there and they feel like they're not gonna have any friends. So that's something that they have to remember. And we try to tell them that, you know, that's something that they have to remember to do. Um, what else? Uh, well, when it comes to applying, we always ask for, for something, you know, it's just, uh, it's protocol. We need something under the parents' names and, you know, sometimes they don't have anything or they say that they can't get anything, but that's just something that we need. Um, and, and that's something that they also need to bring because we tell them and they don't bring anything and they get upset when we can't give them the form, when we can't take the form without it, it's protocol. We need it. <laughs> Okay, so at least one bill or utility or for brother. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. And so you can do it in person or online right now. So I can go onto the website for the district and look and it will um, so I'm I'm actually gonna be in the office um uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh um Tuesdays, Wednesdays and, th and Thursdays. So I'm gonna be in the office. Okay. Um and, and they can also obtain the, the form um online. It should be on the district website. And they can um, and they can submit it via fax, email, or in person <laughs> Perfect. if they wish to do so. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time. And if people have questions, they can reach out to you at the district office. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you.